What are you buying, stranger? What do you view in strangers? re 4 Maverick here. And in this video, I'm going to go over the removal of quick time events or QTEs from Resident Evil 4. And we are going to discuss whether or not this is a good decision. Obviously, it's a matter of opinion. But let's go all the way back to 2005 and talk about the original game and all of the QTEs that we find in there. So when you think of quick time events, the first thing that should really come to mind if you're a Resident Evil fan is the fight between Krauser and Leon. Here you have to push through with at least five action commands, and it's like a QTE boss battle. So we won't be seeing that in the remake, and it's probably just to help the flow of the game, help so that the cutscenes work well together, and so that people can get through without worrying about solving something randomly. There's a certain nostalgic charm in hitting those button prompts when they peer randomly and you don't know what to do, like when the boulder's falling down and chasing Leon, or when he's in front of Salazar's throne and Salazar triggers the trap and you have to press X and square real quick or you get impaled. It's just woven into the fabric of the original Resident Evil 4. And I do have some concerns taking it out completely. I mean, I understand why, but personally, I, if I was in charge of making the Resident Evil 4 remake, then I would definitely put something like that in there. I might reduce it because it is a little excessive and it's not the best for replayability. Now there might be some QTE mechanics present in the remake, but it's not going to be anything like we've seen before. It will certainly be a watered down version of the QTEs found in Resident Evil 4, which are rather excessive at some points, and in some ways add insult to injury uh, in the harder difficulties when you're already struggling with more powerful enemies. There will probably be command prompts in little areas of the game, like when the troll falls and you have to press X and square to avoid getting crushed, little things like that, but I highly doubt we're going to see anything like button mashing or excessive uh, action commands. Another heart-pumping, anxiety-inducing part of Resident Evil 4 is when you're getting chased by that giant Salazar statue, and that is a major QTE part because you have to button mash X and then at the same time press L2 or R2 on the bases of the pillars. So they got really creative in Resident Evil 4 when they were making these QTEs, and it was designed so that you could get a heart-pumping experience, this release of adrenaline, when this giant Salazar statue is chasing you, or if you get grabbed by Batoras Mendez and you have to use the left stick to get free from his grasp. See, I think that it would be a mistake to remove everything, and it seems like they're going to keep some pretty staple parts in there, but button mashing makes it more exciting to a degree. We all remember running from that boulder the first time and being like, wow, that came out of nowhere. But I will give you this much. You don't want to button mash that boulder if you're going to be replaying Resident Evil 4 five times. You know, that gets really old and I can see why the developers wanted to get rid of it. There has been a collective hatred for the QTEs in Resident Evil 4. A lot of people believe that it is toxic for the game. It's always been Resident Evil 4's chink in its armor is the quick time events, but I think that they're exaggerating a little bit. I mean, that was from an era of gaming when quick time events were more vigorous and aggressive because it's it's adds an extra element of challenge, you know? You gotta think on your toes. It, it sort of puts you in Leon's shoes. You gotta think like an agent. You never know what's gonna happen. And another instance of a QTE from RE4 is when you, you go through the hallway full of the lasers. That's one of the coolest QTE moments in the game. Do we really want to take something like that out? I don't think so. So you're getting into some murky waters when it comes to what are we going to put in, what are we going to take out, and nobody's going to know for sure until the remake actually comes out. But until then, we just got to speculate if this is going to be healthy for the game or not. Now, the way to look at it is like sweets. 
Sweets are really good. I love candy, love donuts, whatever. But too much will make you sick, right? So it's the same thing with the QTEs. I will admit that they were a little bit excessive, so reducing them is probably the best way to go because everything in moderation. But if they took them out completely in areas like the laser point, like when you're going through that hallway, I don't think that should be taken out. I don't think the Krauser part should be taken out because that's one of the most quintessential moments of the entire game is when you fight Krauser in that QTE sequence. So we'll see what happens, you know. I'd like to know what you guys think. Should QTEs be showcased in the game in all their glory from the original? Or should they be reduced as Capcom is deciding to do for the benefit of the collective uh, opinion about them in the game? And I will have a discussion with you. So please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one, strangers. RE4 Maverick, out. Come back any time.